little bit later today, Michael Johnson will be competing in the 4 by 200 meter relay. And when he does, it will be difficult to forget that he owns the world record in the 200 meters, a record he set at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. I sat down with Michael Johnson yesterday, and I asked him if he has yet fully recognized the magnitude of his double gold medal performance at those Olympics. I think that, you know, I have, but I think that as my career winds down, I'll probably think about it more when my career is over. But right now, it's, it's difficult to think about something that happened two years ago and when you have to focus on races that are coming up today and uh, the fact that I won two Olympic gold medals in 96 doesn't afford me the, the opportunity to put my blocks two inches or two meters further than everybody else's into the race. I mean, it's, it's, it's all even. And there's a saying in track and field that you're only as good as your last race, and, and it's very much true. So, you know, I have to put every race, uh, regardless of whether it's an Olympic Games uh, uh, double or a disappointment, I have to put that race behind me and go on to the next one. Less than a year after Atlanta, there was this much hyped race to try to determine who was the world's fastest man, you versus Donovan Bailey. And the aftermath of, aftermath of that had to have been very difficult. What was it like for you to go from the incredible high in Atlanta to what must have certainly been a disappointing low? This is a sport where, you know, yearly you're going to get an injury. And, uh, and I've been very fortunate. So, um, you know, I can't really be disappointed in, in what happened. I mean, it could have happened a year prior and then I wouldn't have uh, been in a position to even to participate in that race or, or uh, you know a lot of the opportunities that have come to me because of the Olympics and because of my consistency over the years so um, you know I was of course disappointed that uh, that I got injured and I wasn't able to compete like I wanted to but um, you know, like I said in the big picture of things I've been very fortunate and you've got to take the bad with the good. You came back and won the 400 at Worlds in 97. What did that win mean to you, given the events preceding it? That race was one off of experience. Uh, I wasn't 100% healthy. Um, people are always going to find something to criticize you about. You win races, you win them by 10, 15 meters. Everyone says, oh, but he wouldn't win the race if there was this Superman type of person who could stay with him through, uh, you know, 300 meters. Well, you know, this proves to those people that I can win the race from wherever, and that comes from experience because I don't just go out there and run. I obviously I've studied the uh, the sport and studied my events, and, and I know how to win races. And um, you know, the 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 trade-off in that is. I've gotten older and I've run more races, so I have more experience, but uh, also I've gotten older and I don't heal as fast as I used to. So, you know, the Toronto race, uh, that was a, a, an injury that took me a while to come back from and, and I wasn't 100 percent healthy at the World Championships. But I was proud of myself for uh, for being able to get back to you know, enough of uh, shape to go out there and win the race and win it, not just off of my physical ability, but but uh, the experience that I've gained in how to run the races and how to conserve throughout the rounds. World records. How important are they to you, and specifically this goal of hitting the world record in the 400? It's, yeah, I certainly want to break the world record in the 400. I, I really do, and people are probably going to start to think that I don't after a while, but it's just that so much attention is given to it, and, and it's all everyone talks about, you know, is Michael Johnson breaking the world record in the 400, and he's got to do it, and when's he going to do it, and that kind of thing. And world records are so special because it's rare that they're broken, and it's such a difficult thing to do. Um, but I think that, you know, it's possible. I think that I can do it. But I don't think about it every day and train for it every day. I train to, to be the best that I can be, and hopefully one day, you know, all of the factors will come together. I am joined now by Otto Bolden, who is the reigning world champion in the 200 meters and an often foe of uh, Michael Johnson in the 200. You ran against him in 96 in the Olympic Games. You took the bronze behind his gold and at the time thought he was the fastest man you had ever seen. What are his chances of breaking the world record in the 400? It's the only thing he has left to do in his career, and uh, I think the only reason he didn't break it in 96 is because he had all those rounds to run in Atlanta. This year, with no major championships uh, to be held, I think Michael has a very good shot this year, and he's opened already at 45 flat. A rising star in the track and field scene that we're seeing a lot of is Marion Jones. We're seeing her here today. She's projected to be one of the greats in the sport. What do you see in her future? Well, there's a whisper going around uh, in the track fraternity this weekend that uh, she's trying to attempt five gold medals uh, in Sydney. Mary is the kind of athlete that can do it. I've, I think she's the best talent to come out of the U.S. Uh, sprint-wise uh, since Jackie joined the Kersey. So if anybody can do it, Jackie, can, uh, Mary can definitely do it. What about you, your goals for the remainder of the year and as you head into Sydney? As they always are. Uh, break the 100-meter world record, get a little closer to 1932, and uh, just try to, try, to, try to keep improving. 
thanks so much for joining us, otto bolden. let's send it back upstairs now to gus johnson and company.